thanks and thanks for being here. Thanks, guys. Amazing events this week. Um, my name is Etienne Kekski on Twitter, on GitHub, on Telegram, on every, every other platforms, everywhere. I, I've been Kekski for the last 30 years, even before uh, the internet where, uh, was in your, in your home during the, the, the BBS times, the good old time. So uh, yeah, I've been uh, developing software since a while. So I'm going to talk about Bull Bitcoin and the integration of Lightning Network at Bull Bitcoin, and particularly the UX problems, the user experience problems we got, we are getting. Okay, so this is not a donation address. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, not a QR code for a vaccine passport or anything. It's only a URL on this presentation. So if you want to follow the presentation on your device, you can use that URL. And uh, if there's something too small to read, you are going to, to be able to read it on your device. So I'm from here. I'm from Montreal. I'm a French Canadian. I'm a Quebecois. And this is not my first language. So I'm going to make mistakes. Bear with me. Hopefully you understand what I want to say. So uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about CypherNode. What is CypherNode and how it is used at Bull Bitcoin? And uh, the Lightning Network challenges. So as you probably know, because Francis talked a lot about that on Twitter, we are integrating right now Lightning Network in Bull Bitcoin. And what solutions exist right now? We are going to talk about LNURL. And I'm going to take your questions. But just before uh, this presentation, I got the permission from Francis to show you a demo, a sneak peek uh, of Lightning Network in Bull Bitcoin. So if I have time, and if you are nice, I'm going to show you. OK, what is CypherNode? This description is a description you can find on the repository. It's a powerful description that every time I read it, I laugh. Uh, it comes from Francis, obviously. You will understand what I mean. Modular Bitcoin, full node microservices, API server architecture, and utilities toolkit to build scalable, secure, and featureful apps and services without trusted third parties. Amazing, huh? Eh? What does that mean? <laughs> so I'm going to, um, to explain it a little bit on the, on the next slide. But first, just uh, a bit of history about CypherNode. So in 2017, uh, Francis and I made a talk about Lightning Network uh, for the IOT, the Montreal's IoT community uh, for um, a meetup. And then I had the idea of using, uh, well, building something that would allow uh, uh, bills. And back then it was a Bitcoin outlet, it was not uh, Bull Bitcoin, to use Lightning Network easily. I called it multi-LM because it was one API for any kind of implementation of Lightning Network behind that. So C Lightning, LMD, LMD Eclair, or whatever. So uh, we realized uh, quickly that uh, having Lightning Network functionalities without having Bitcoin functionalities didn't make sense. So it became the Bitcoin mini proxy. And we finally used it to replace all our trusted third parties we were using back then. So uh, you know, you probably know that you have to run your own node, not your keys, not your Bitcoins. And you should add to that, not your node, not your rules. So don't rely on someone else's rules because he could change the rules of his node and you are going to use that node, node's rules. And that's what happened actually in 2017 with the 2x, block, uh, Bitcoin 2x, yeah, Bitcoin 2x and UASF's uh, war. And ultimately, 
Bcash. Anyway, so we started using that in production in 2018 uh, at Bull Bitcoin, and we finally open sourced and officially launched it in September 2018 during the Baltic Honey Badger in Riga. So I invite you to watch this, the, the talk that Francis did uh, back then. It's an amazing speech about why CypherNode exists and why it is, it is important. And you will understand a lot of stuff uh, watching that. Let's go. Yeah, that's a little bit scary maybe, but it's not. Uh, it's the overview of the architecture of CypherNode. So CypherNode is not one application. It's actually an ecosystem. Uh, it's an assembly of a lot of small components that are talking to each other. Here, I, I'm not going to go in, into details for each box that you, you see here, but yeah. Uh, but uh, you can see there are like two zones, the left zone and the right zone. The yellow one is where uh, the core the components of CypherNode resides. Uh, those components are inside a Docker network. It's encrypted, it's secure. And uh, on the right side, we call it the Cypher app network. This is where you uh, deploy your own web applications or applications that are going to use the Cypher node API. So um, let's see on the right, on the left, the brain of CypherNode is the proxy where the request handler takes all the requests and handle them and dispatch them to the right components. So uh, without the proxy, there's nothing. Same for the Bitcoin spender and Bitcoin watcher down there. This is the Bitcoin core, actually. It's, it's your Bitcoin node. It's essential for CypherNode to work. Same thing for Lightning, obviously. We have OTS support. OTS is open timestamp. I'm going to show you a little bit later what it is. Um, on the right side, you have your applications. In our case, at Bull Bitcoin, uh, we have the Bull Bitcoin application here. The Bull Bitcoin application is deployed there. It is uh, a client of the API of the Cypher node uh, stack. And it, uh, we can, when we deploy an application there, we can specify if we want the application to be exposed on the internet or not. So uh, you can make it public or not. Obviously, uh, Bull Bitcoin is public because we want our users across Canada to access it. But for example, up there, there's a batcher. The batcher is another Cypher app that we developed that, is, uh, that allows us <coughs> or anyone to batch transactions together. So instead of sending one transaction per order for our users, we can batch them in huge transactions that takes uh, less space on the blockchain and it lowers our cost, of course. So the batcher is not exposed outside. It's not because we don't want our user to add uh, outputs or anyone to add outputs to the to the batch or to execute a batch. So it's local, it's private, but the bull Bitcoin application can access and talk to the batcher to add outputs to the batch. And the batcher is an, uh, a client to the Cypher node API because the batcher is going to build the, the batch using the Bitcoin core, and it's going to broadcast it. And then it's going to tell Bull Bitcoin, hey, the batch has been executed. That's why on your, on your, on your sc screen, when you are part of a batch, you know when the batch is broadcast. So um, it's pretty easy to, to deploy your, your uh, web application there. It's called a Cypher app, but it's actually a regular application that you can 
do and you are just adding one file that is going to specify some stuff about uh, do you want your uh, application to be uh, exposed and here are the keys that you're going to use to access the, the API. Because here there's a gatekeeper. The gatekeeper is, is the entry point of the API and it's going to validate your keys to validate if you have authorized, well, authenticate and authorize your, uh, your request. Uh, here we have an uh, interesting part. Uh, it's a broker because we are using a publisher subscriber pattern inside uh, CypherNode. So any component in the ecosystem could publish a message on a topic and any subscriber to that topic is going to receive the message. So for example, if you are a developer of a wallet, you are going to um, deploy your wallet here in the Cypher app zone and you are going to subscribe to the topic, for example, on uh, transaction confirmations. So when the proxy receives um, uh, confirmations on a watched address or watched transactions, it's going to publish a message on that topic and your wallet is going to receive that message and update the display for your users. Okay, I won't go into more, oh, yeah, another thing. There's a Tor here, the Tor component. So, um, uh, CypherNode supports Tor. You can Torify, uh, you can turn it on, turn it off. You can choose your components that you want to Torify. For example, you could uh, choose uh, to Torify Lightning, but, uh, but not put it on the ClearNet, but you know, uh, do the same with the Bit Bitcoin client. Uh, and uh, etc. Right? Good? Sure. Excellent. Okay. This is a sequence diagram. Okay? So, uh, how it works is you, you, you see the players and the interactions between the players. Uh, you are following the, the arrows from top to bottom. So I will be using that kind of uh, uh, diagram throughout the presentation. I don't want to go into technical bits and bytes details, but uh, having an idea of the interactions between the players is pretty interesting for you. So how does Bull Bitcoin use CypherNode? For example, uh, if a user wants to send us uh, Bitcoin so that we can pay his bills. We are going to show the user uh, a deposit address. So Bull Bitcoin is going to, oh, by the way, the guy on the right is uh, CypherNode. It's the CypherNode logo. And uh, yeah, oh, another thing. The CypherNode logo has been designed by an amazing artist, Madex. Have a look at his arts on Twitter, Spacebull on Twitter. So, um, yeah, and because CypherNode is open source, by the way, uh, everyone can contribute. Even if you're not technical, you can contribute otherwise, like, uh, like this logo or like documentation, etc. So, uh, BullBitcoin is going to ask CypherNode, hey, CypherNode, give me an, a destination address so I can show a QR code to my user so he can send us funds. And by the way, watch that address. And when there is a transaction on that address, well, just call me back. And uh, Bull Bitcoin is going to send to CypherNode a callback URL, so that CypherNode is going to call that URL back when there is a transaction on that address. That's how we can update the, the display uh, on the user's screen. You can do the same for an XPUB, so instead of watching different address one by one, you can watch the XPUB, so all the addresses uh, for that user. You can also stamp a hash in, in bull Bitcoin every time we do an order with the user. Uh, we are signing a contract with our PGP key, and we are stamping the hash of that contract, including the, the signature, on the blockchain using open timestamp. 
This is a cryptographic proof of the existence of the contract at that time. So it's used to, when there's litigation between whatever, whoever. So um, same thing happened here. Uh, Bull Bitcoin is going to say, to tell CypherNode, call me back on that address when uh, the stamp is complete, when the stamp is, has been confirmed on the blockchain. And finally, here, when uh, Bull Bitcoin asks a cipher node to create a lightning network invoice so that our user is able to pay to send us funds on that uh, uh, using lightning network. Uh, we want cipher node to call us back to notify us when the, uh, the invoice has been paid. Excellent. So we are working hard right now on Lightning integration with uh, there's Paul and Arthur back there that are there. Uh, they are amazing, amazing uh, devs. So, um, but we had a, a version of Lightning Network inside Bull Bitcoin in early 2019. The problem is, well, we never went live with that uh, with that version because we had a lot of problems and the problems were UX related. So back then it was still reckless to run a node, a lightning node, because uh, when you run a lightning node, you need to have real time backup because your channels are going to change, the, the states of your channels are going to change throughout the day. And if, uh, I, I'm not sure if uh, Gustavo talked about that, but. Uh, there's the concept of penalty transaction, so it's an incentive uh, not to cheat. If one of the two nodes try to cheat with an old state of the channel, the other node can use the penalty transaction, broadcast it, and take the whole, the total of the, of the channel. So you need um, real-time backup. Right now, we have it. We have it with LND, we have it with, with C Lightning, with uh, plugins. So it's better today than it was then. Uh, we had a lot of routing problems. Uh, today we have what's called MPP, multi-path payment. So we can, if you want to send an amount, a payment to some node, you can split the amount uh, between multiple routes and then it will be uh, merged again at the end, so the payment can be done. But back then, that was not in place. So there was uh, a lot of routing problems. There was no routes uh, correct for the payment you wanted to do. And, well, I will show you later how we are using LNURL, but the channel management uh, had uh, also a lot of um, difficulties because it was um, when the, the channels is, is not balanced, uh, if the, the funds is only on one side of the channel, it's pretty difficult to make payments. So right uh, today, we have plugins and tools to rebalance channels. And um, also with LNURL, you will see that we can ask someone to create a channel for us. And there's that big problem of Bolt 11. So if you want to make a payment, you need a Bolt 11 uh, invoice before making the payment. So you have to ask the other peer to create an invoice, to send it to you. Make sure that the amount is correct, and then you can pay it. But you cannot, for example, us as Bull Bitcoin, we would like to make our user's life better. So we would like to create the invoice for the, the user so he doesn't have to create it manually. But we can't because uh, we need the, the private keys to, to create an invoice and we don't have our user's private keys. So, this is another diagram. 
showing the user experience hell of Vault 11. So uh, our user wants to buy Bitcoin. We are going, as Vault Bitcoin, we are going to send them the description and the exact amount so that the user is able to create the Vault 11 or the invoice. But if the user doesn't type correctly the, the good amount, the right amount, uh, or if, I don't know, there's a typo, or um, instead of millisatoshis, he enters satoshis, or stuff like that, there's going to be uh, a problem. So uh, you could have also uh, use a copy paste, but between devices, between your computer and your uh, mobile device, it's not that simple. So the user has to type it, will make typos, obviously, and then he has to uh, copy and paste the Bolt 11 string, a huge string like this, send it to us. We are going to validate, decode this string, validate the amount to make sure he doesn't you know, he doesn't get more money than what we agreed on just before. And then we can pay the user. So that could sound like it's not a big deal, but it actually is. The user experience is not very good. The user, it, it's error prone. And each time there's an error, the her error management here, or the, the error handling with all the the error messages and the repetition of everything, it's, uh, it's not cool for the users. So, we want to make the users happy again. We want to hide the complexity to the users, and we want the user to have fun buying Bitcoin at Bull Bitcoin. Here is the same exact use case, but using LNURL withdraw. So instead of Bolt 11, LNURL withdraw allows a user to receive funds. The big difference here, Bull Bitcoin is going to show a QR code to the user. So there's no amount. Well, it, it, we are going to, to show the amount, obviously, but we are going to show a QR code that the user is going to scan with his uh, LNURL compatible wallet. So he scans the QR code, the wallet is going to show him information about the payment, and then the user can go away, go take a bath or have a coffee, because um, uh, the user is the one that will trigger the payment. So traditionally in Lightning Network, the payer is going to trigger the payment to the payee. But here, we reverse the roles, and the, the, uh, the user can, when he feels is a good time, he can click Confirm, and then there's a lot of stuff under the hood going on. The user's wallet is going to communicate with our LN URL server, and they are going to handshake, transfer information, and ultimately, the payment is going to go through from our server to the user. I'm going to show you in details on the next slide. Here, another view, another point of view of uh, what's happening. So on the left, we have the bull Bitcoin network. On the right, we have the user. This cloud is the internet, okay? So uh, the green boxes are exposed to the internet. So the user is going to talk to Bull Bitcoin and he wants to buy Bitcoin. Bull Bitcoin is going to, uh, to say, oh, okay, do you want to use LNURL? It's better. So the user is going to say, yeah, sure. Bull Bitcoin is going to talk to the Cypher app that we are currently developing. It's an LNURL Cypher app. So just to make sure you understand what I'm talking about, the green part on the right 
is where the, we have the Cypher apps where you can develop your own software and uh, deploy them there. Well, there will be an, a new uh, box soon that is called LNURL. So the, the bull Bitcoin uh, software application is going to talk to the Cypher app and ask it, please create a LN URL for that amount, for that description, for that user. And it's going to show the QR code to the user. The user is going to take uh, his wallet, scan the QR code, and the wallet is going to communicate using the information inside the QR code to our Cypher app. The same Cypher app that Bull Bitcoin was coming, uh, talking to, the wallet, the user's wallet is going to talk to that same uh, Cypher app. And the Cypher app is going to say, oh yeah, I remember you. Bull Bitcoin just asked me to create a LN URL for you. Okay, so there's a secret, by the way. There's a, there's a secret code inside the, the request that allow it to, uh, to, to recognize what uh, is going on. So the user is going to have a pop-up. Hey, you're going to receive that amount for that description. The user is going to say, yes, that's what I was expecting. The wallet is going to tell Cypher app, the Cypher app, OK, let's go. Everything's good. The Cypher app is a Cypher node API client. It's going to use Cypher node to say, OK, Lightning Network Pay. Pay to that Bolt 11. And the user is going to receive the payment, is going to have a response from the Cypher app. The Cypher app is going to notify Bull Bitcoin that the payment has been done with that, those information, that information. And Bull Bitcoin is going to show to the user on the screen, oh, we just got your payment. Here is the information about that payment. So what's important here is that the user didn't type anything. He didn't have uh, a chance to make a typo because he's just scanning the QR code and confirming information. And usually the machines don't make typos, so it's a good thing for the user. OK, LNURL is not only for withdrawing. It's not only like what we just saw. There are a few uh, sub-protocol, if, if you will, uh, inside LNURL. There's the withdraw that we just saw. There's LNURL pay, LNURL auth, and LNURL channel. I'm going to show you what it, they all are. OK, nobody is sleeping yet. Excellent. <laughs> OK, let's go with LN URL withdraw, what, what we just saw, actually, but in more details. There's uh, the user on the left. There's the bull Bitcoin application in the center. And there's the Cypher node stack on the right. The user is going to, to, uh, to tell bull Bitcoin, I want to buy Bitcoin with LN URL. Bull Bitcoin is going to talk to Cypher node, hey, please create LN URL withdraw. The LN URL is going to be sent to the bull Bitcoin app application that will create a QR code related to that uh, string. And then the wallet, the user's wallet is going to do all the job. It's going to communicate directly with Cypher node or the Cypher app here. Uh, the Cypher app is going to handshake or make sure that everything is good. Uh, and it's going to send the amount, the exact amount, the exact description, so that the user can just like, oh yeah, that's exactly what I, I was expecting. So he can just like confirm the action, and then the wallet is going to make the final uh, request to Cypher node. Okay, everything's good. Please pay. Cypher node is going to pay, and Cypher node is going to tell Bull Bitcoin with a notification that the, the payment has been done. And Bull Bitcoin is going to change the state of the order and display something to the user. Here again, the user just scanned a QR code. There's no typo. LNURL pay is pretty interesting. It's actually the opposite. So 
instead of the user asking to be paid, the user is asking permission to send money, to send funds to the other, to the other side. So uh, the user wants to sell Bitcoin to bull Bitcoin so we can pay for his bills. So um, bull Bitcoin is going to create a LNURL pay here. It's ex it, it, it really looks like the, the, the withdraw diagram. Uh, and, but here there's a big difference and a big advantage. It's that the LNURL string or the QR code is a static one. That means that the user can reuse that QR code for multiple different payments. So that's not possible right now in Lightning Network. If you make a payment to an invoice, you cannot reuse that invoice to make another payment to the same node because the invoice is a one-time thing. So here we can create static LNURL string and reusable invoice. So the, um, the wallet is going to request to the, to the Cypher app with the information contained in, into that uh, QR code. And uh, the Cypher app is going to know what is, he's, he's talking about because he just created that uh, LNURL uh, QR code. So it's going to send the information to the user like the minimum amount he is willing to receive, the maximum amount he is willing to receive, the description, and the domain, so the user can make sure that he is paying the good person. Here the domain is like lnurl.bullbitcoin.com, for example. So the user is going to, um, to, uh, to enter the amount he wants to send, and there's another request that is going through to the Cypher app. The Cypher app is going to create a Bolt 11 and send it to the wallet. The wallet is going to decode that Bolt 11 and finally pay that invoice. That's all transparent and that's all hidden. The user just saw the QR code and confirmed the thing. So all the, that complexity is happening between the wallet well, between the two softwares, actually. That's why the user experience here is much better than using the, tra the traditional Bolt 11 invoice. And like uh, with the, the withdraw, CypherNode is going to notify Bull Bitcoin that the payment has been done, and Bull Bitcoin is able to change the, the order state and tell the user, thank you very much, the payment is done. Once again, the user only scans a QR code and confirms. LNURL auth. Oh, I forgot. OK, so the static LNURL thing is pretty interesting because uh, imagine it's not implemented yet, uh, by the way, in uh, bull Bitcoin, but maybe one day. Uh, imagine the user. Can, could create a LN URL string or a, a special QR code for his electricity bill, uh, uh, another one for his telephone bill, etc. And he could, when he receives the, the bill, he could just like reuse that QR code and send the right payment uh, uh, that month without even logging in. Uh, bull Bitcoin to pay the, 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 the bills. So bull Bitcoin, bull Bitcoin is going to receive a payment on that QR code and it's going to know that this payment is for that bill in that user's profile. Okay, LNURL auth, quickly. Instead of entering your username, your password and maybe your 2FA, what you can do is Scan a QR code, okay? So the user is going to tell Bull Bitcoin, okay, I want to log in. Bull Bitcoin is going to create a LNURL app. Exactly the same thing, uh, LNURL QR code, and the user is going to scan that code. And then he can choose. 
You can register a new account, you can log into this account, you can link a public key to this account, or just make an authorization, uh, authentication to make an action without being logged in. The thing is, um, in the bull Bitcoin context, uh, logging uh, log into his account only is the only uh, thing that makes sense here. Because um, all the other stuff has been already done during the account creation inside Bull Bitcoin. So um, the wallet is going to make a, um, a, a, trans um, a request to Cyphernode with a signature, a special signature, a special signature to make sure uh, he is the one he is saying he is. Cypherno is going to check th that signature using the public key, the user's public key, and just tell the user, okay, or not. And it's going to tell Bull Bitcoin, okay, you can let him, let him in. And the user is like, like that. Once again, the user only scan a QR code and confirms. Now, LNUR channel. So in Lightning Network, as you probably know, uh, you have to open channels with people before, uh, before uh, doing any, making any, pay any payments. But um, it would be very nice if you could ask someone to open a channel with you so there's funds on his side of the channel. It's not always possible or, you know, uh, you, can, you, you don't know uh, uh, personally every node on the network. So LNURL channel allows a user to ask some service to open a channel with funds on his side of the channel so that the user can, you know, make transactions or receive payments on that, ch uh, on that channel. Once again, it's pretty much the same concept as the others. Uh, the user is going to scan a QR code, and that's about it. So uh, the user is going to ask uh, Bull Bitcoin, hey, please, can you open a channel with me? I would like to buy a Bitcoin using Lightning Network with you. So, uh, but I don't have any channel with you know, funds on the other sides. So Bull Bitcoin is going to say, yeah, man, no problem. Uh, especially if you have funds in your account. <laughs> so uh, it's going to, uh, to create that channel, well, that LNURL request, and show the QR code to the, to the user. The user is going to scan the QR code, and the wallet is going to make the request with the Cypher app so that uh, all the handshaking and the details on the, the channel opening is going to happen. And finally, uh, Cypher node is going to open a channel with the, with the user's node. So once again, scan a QR code, confirms, that's all. Make sense? Yes. Yeah? Excellent. So, um, I don't know if uh, you want to ask questions before I can show you a sneak peek of our test environment. It's a version of Bull Bitcoin that has Lightning Network in it. Um, on pre-prod, it's using testnet. Uh, every demo during a presentation always fails. Hopefully it will succeed. Do you want to have, do you have questions before? Or not? After. After? Yeah. Good. It might, it might bring new questions. So oh, yeah. Eesh. I'm in big trouble. OK, well, let's see. After all, I visited. Yeah, that's it. OK. Here we go. So this is Bull Bitcoin, the demo version. I'm going to, and everything is fake here. Oh, not everything. <laughs> Well, what I mean is this is not real money, and this is, it, it won't be real Bitcoins. It's a testnet uh, environment. So I want to buy Bitcoin on, uh, on Bull Bitcoin. I want to buy for 
one daughter of Bitcoin, let's say. Okay? You, do you see? Is it big enough? Okay, wait. I'm going to make it uh, like this. Ha <laughs> ha. Here. Okay. Here you can choose if you want uh, to receive Bitcoin, Liquid, or Lightning Network here. One of each. One of each. Okay, that's about it. Let's create the Bitcoin order. Okay. Here, what's different from what you already know about bull Bitcoin is that we have a switch here to switch between LN URL or Bolt 11. Okay? So by default, it's LN URL. We have the LN URL string here. Yes. And the corresponding QR code. Okay, unfortunately, I don't have uh, LN URL wallet on testnet. I'm not sure if it exists actually. Uh, so what I did is I created one here. It's a, it's a command line small LNURL client. That's what I'm going to do uh, to, to use for the demo. So I'm going to copy and paste that LNURL voucher string. Here I'm going to use my little script with the LN URL string and hopefully it's going to work. I'm going to receive some funds without entering or creating a Bolt 11 entering any, um, any amount. So just to make sure here we are going to receive 17, 19 sats. Okay, I have a wallet here that is waiting to receive, to receive something. It is supposed to go there. Let's see. Enter. Oh yeah, it worked. So the payment has been done. The order is completed. The information about the payment is here. I think it looks good, okay? Let's see in the wallet here. I'm going to just refresh the, the page. Okay, let's wait. It's going to come in. I'm pretty sure. I tried it just before the, the presentation, so it's supposed to work. Okay, so that was a, uh, an example with LNURL. I'm, to, I'm going to show you the, the exact same use case, but with Bolt 11. Okay, we're going to buy for one dollar of Bitcoin using the Lightning Network. Let's create the, the order, okay. I'm curious. Let's go, come in. Okay. So we're going to use a Bolt 11 invoice. So the big difference here, as you know it, because I just explained it, the user has to create a Bolt 11 invoice and paste it here. Of course, he could also scan it, but if you, you want to scan it, uh, you need another de device, obviously, to be able to scan it using the, your uh, laptop's camera. So I'm going to go here and create a Bolt 11 invoice. Let's try something. No, not now. <laughs> okay, so I'm creating an invoice to receive the payment. I'm, look at the Bolt 11 string. It's huge, huh? So of course, it would be better to, to scan the QR code. Okay, I'm going to take that invoice and put it there, here. 
and confirm the purchase. Let's see. Oh, yes, it worked. Let's go see here if it's going to. Just now, the payment came in. Oh, I know why. I know why the, the other uh, one didn't work because it was, it was on the command line. It's another node. It's not related to that uh, Spark wallet. That's why we don't see it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It worked. <laughs> That's the important thing. So that was a sneak peek of, oh, yeah. OK, let's try the other way around. So the user wants to sell Bitcoin. So I want to make a payment of $1 on some on some bill well i think i'm going to pass that because i have some information that bill so I, i'm not going to do it ah uh, that's that, that's a shame well it create doesn't matter what create a big one oh yeah Let's see. Kudo, kudo. Oh, it's not there. Not yet. Kona bicycles. I don't know. Well, there's a there's a validation on the the account number and everything, so I don't know all the validation about the account. But it doesn't matter. The thing is, it's exactly the same principle. We are going with this here. There's a, there's a little switch box here. You can switch from Bitcoin to Lightning Network. And we are going to show you a QR code of the invoice, of the Vault 11 invoice. The user is going to scan it and just send the funds, send the funds using Lightning Network. It's going to uh, be notified when the payment is done, like I told you previously. And, uh, and it's lightning fast, of course. That's why it's called lightning. Okay, good. So, any questions? Uh, yeah, first of all, thank you for the presentation. A round of applause for you. <laughs> Donc des questions. Uh, I think we can ask questions in French too. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay with that, it's in. So any okay. questions, guys? Etienne, est-ce que tu peux? C'est peut-être obvious un peu, mais est-ce que tu peux élaborer pourquoi Bold Bitcoin ont choisi de développer sur Lightning Network? Peut-être élaborer sur des use cases pour des utilisateurs qui se demanderaient « Ouais, mais Bitcoin, c'est correct pour moi, mais pourquoi que Lightning, c'est euh, important pour vous? » Bien sûr. Il y a quelques semaines, on a eu un surge où, un, où le, quand le même pool a été complètement fou, le même pool, c'est-à-dire qu'il y a tellement de, de transactions sur le network que les frais Bitcoin étaient extrêmement élevés. Euh, je pense que ces temps-ci, les frais Bitcoin, ça doit être autour de 5 à 10 Satoshi par V-Bytes. Euh, il y a eu des moments où est-ce qu'on a atteint plus que 300 Satoshi par V-Bytes. Nos transactions, nos batchs, nos gros batchs qu'on faisait pour payer nos users, ils nous coûtaient des dizaines et même des centaines de dollars parfois. Évidemment, avec Lightning, les, les, le coût est infime, c'est vraiment petit. Puis euh, aussi, il y, a, il y a plusieurs users qui, euh, qui étaient payés puis qui attendaient la confirmation avant de pouvoir utiliser leurs fonds. Souvent, quand le, le même pool est plein, c'est très, très long avant que ça soit confirmé. Il euh, y a des users qui, nous, qui, nous, qui communiquaient avec nous autres puis qui disaient « Hey, j'ai besoin de ce, ces bitcoins-là, là, là. » Donc là, c'était du travail manuel pour essayer d'arranger ça. Il euh, n'y ben, a pas ce problème-là avec Lightning Network, évidemment. Donc, il y a une question de coût. Une question de temps, c'est beaucoup plus rapide. Puis, euh, le user experience est, est, est vraiment excellent aussi. Donc, euh, c'est pas mal pour ça qu'on qu 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 a fait le son. Si, euh, 
Évidemment, ça, c'est un gros problème. La gestion des, des liquidités, euh, ça rentre dans le problème de channel, des, ouais, channel management. Euh, quand on crée, là, il faut qu'on crée des channels d'avance. Puis c'est ce qu'on a fait. On a, on, a fait euh, on a mis en ligne notre NUR Lightning Network il y a plusieurs mois pour s'assurer d'avoir une bonne liquidité, plusieurs channels, puis euh, euh, des deux côtés, des deux côtés de, de, de inbound puis euh, outbound. Puis, euh, fait, effectivement, on va éventuellement avoir quelques difficultés ou du travail manuel à faire pour, euh, pour euh, cette liquidité-là. Comme par exemple, à un moment donné, il va falloir qu'on ferme des channels pour pouvoir récupérer les fonds pour dealer avec des gens qui n'utilisent pas Lightning Network. Donc, c'est un problème, mais je pense que ça, ça, se, ça se contourne assez bien. Uh, I think the question was interesting enough for the live audience. So yeah. the question was why Bull Bitcoin decided to start integrating Lightning into its services. So if right. you could like basically repeat yes. or, uh, the, 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 the answer because I think it's important. Yeah. So when there was, there, there was um, uh, a mempool surge uh, lately or last year, several times there were fees, uh, 300 satoshi per byte, and that was very expensive for us. So, um, and also, uh, when we are sending the funds, uh, the, the bitcoins, to our users, the users are expecting to have, to, to be able to, to, uh, to spend those coins uh, uh, in the short term, actually. So, uh, we had a lot of problems with that. So Lightning Network helps a lot on that, uh, a lot on the cost. It's cheaper and uh, it's faster, of course. But like you said, uh, we have to deal with the liquidity on the channels. So that's why we uh, put online our Lightning Network node several months ago, so that we have a lot of channel, a lot of channels, and. Uh, pretty balanced funds around the channels. And we also have um, Wombo channels. So those are channels with more liquidity than, permit, than permitted. So uh, usually the, the maximum amount in, uh, in a channel is 0.16 uh, Bitcoin. We have Wombo channels of 0.5 Bitcoin, so have a Bitcoin in one channel. Also, we uh, tested some experimental um, uh, features with C-Lightning called dual-funded dual channels. So we can open a channel with someone and there's some handshaking magic happening and both the, both the nodes, both nodes are going to put funds on the channel. So the channel is going to be balanced right on creation. Thank you. Uh, more questions? Hi, so j just a question. If, did I understand this correctly? Um, for the accounting record, is that what's captured by open timestamps? It's kind of, um, you know, because once, is, the, is the, the account, the record of what has happened, is that um, decoupled from Cypher node? Like, is that kept in a separate database or is the node itself keeping the, the past record of all those transactions and all that extra data? Does that make sense? Uh, okay, question? so it's a question about open time slim? Yeah, I'm trying to sort of figure out where it's used. Is it, is it, is it that, uh, you know, it's sort of, it's the stamp of when that transaction happens? Because my thought is if you, if you shut down the Lightning node, do you lose all that historical information? Okay. Is that what uh, Open Time Stamps is kind of yeah, doing well, for you? Or am, am okay, I it's two different. It, it's two different and independent things. So uh, we are using Open Time Stamp to stamp uh, our contracts on the blockchain. So even if our node, Bitcoin node or Lightning node, crashes or uh, uh, we lose everything on there, uh, whatever, 
uh, the stems are going to stay on the blockchain. And, but you're right, but I'm not sure if that was your question, but uh, you, you must, uh, we must keep a list of what we are hashing or stamping on the blockchain because uh, the whole information is not on the blockchain, it's only the hash, well, it's a, a Merkle tree, so it's the hash of the hashes of uh, all the documents that are being stamped on the blockchain. So we need to keep the original documents. So if we lose the documents or the, the contracts, uh, we cannot um, recover them from the hashes in the stems. So I'm not sure if, uh, yeah. if it answers that question. OK, good. Um, so you said early in the presentation that uh, if you don't, like, the reason you use QR codes uh, with Lightning is that if you do a typo, you can lose uh, uh, your Satoshis. Or can you elaborate on that? Like, how, how does that work if, if, you cop, like, if you copy or make a typo in some address? It's going nowhere and it's gone no, no. forever or? Uh... No, we're not losing anything. The, okay. uh, what I was uh, trying to say is uh, if there is a typo somewhere, the payment is not going to be done. Okay, okay. There's no payment possible because it has to be uh, the exact amount and the exact information if you want the payment to go through. Uh, if, for example, the user wants to buy one Bitcoin, and in the creation of his invoice, he enters two Bitcoins. Well, we don't want to send him two Bitcoins because we're you know, selling him one Bitcoin. Yeah. So it's important to make, well, to make sure that the amount enter is, uh, is correct. So it's just uh, a matter of make it, uh, make it easier to, uh, to, okay. to, to process. Less friction, less because friction, less error. Yeah, less okay. error prone, uh, et cetera. Okay, I have a second question, yeah. not related to that one. Okay. So I use, I started using uh, the Phoenix app mm -hmm. for Lightning, and I was sending Satoshis to just any, many people in, in Salvador. Okay, um, <laughs> good. So I just want to understand, because a lot of people talk about like creating channels, lightning channels, but I can't like, I never created any channels with the uh, Phoenix and yeah. I'd like just to understand like, why is it working if I'm not creating channels? And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's yeah. a too long answer, but. Uh, well, it's not a too long answer, but I won't go into details because okay. uh, Gustavo talked about that earlier today. But uh, with wallets like Blue Wallet, Moon, Phoenix or stuff like that, they are taking care of the channel management okay. for you, for the user, and it's easier for the user, and it's a good thing. But uh, like Gustavo was saying, there are trade-offs about that because uh, they can, well, they own the channel for you, so you trust uh, okay. someone else to, you know, to manage your channels. Uh, not necessarily your funds because what I understand is that the user, the, the wallet on your device, uh, keeps the private keys anyway. But you, uh, you rely on them for other stuff. Perfect. OK, thank you. I've read a little bit about Bolt 12, and I don't think it's implemented yet. And, um, I'm not sure I 100% understand it, but it made it seem like you would be able to have a, a permanent lightning QR. Yeah. So you could have it tattooed on you forever. Yeah. First of all, would that be something, if implemented, would that be something that would benefit uh, your, what you just laid out there? And then second, how how is it they would just, just from a mechanical point of view, how is it that that would be that permanent uh, QR is linked to the um, the rate, the rate, the rate where it's always it's time locked? Yeah, 
good question because LNURL uh, was implemented because there was a need. And because there was a need, uh, both 12 and offers are, well, uh, came, came around, you know? So um, the guys that developed LNURL are not the same guys that, that are developing the Lightning Network protocol. So offers, both 12 and offers are part of the protocol. So you don't need all the other components that I, walked, uh, I was showing you here like the LNURL Cypher app and the uh, LNURL compatible wallet, you won't need that anymore because it's, it's going to be part of the Lightning Network protocol, okay? So the reason why we uh, chose LNURL is because it is ready right now. That's the only, it, it's ready. LNURL is ready right now. So that's why we chose that. But I believe offers and Bolt 12 are going to, you know, uh, to be a real thing, a real thing in several months, and we will see uh, at that time what we are going to do. So yeah, uh, to answer your other questions, I'm not, ex uh, I don't have an expertise on Bolt 12 and offers, so I don't know exactly the details on how the static destination or static invoice works, but I guess it should be something similar, like handshakes through the Lightning Network between the two nodes, that, and the two nodes are going to talk to each other to make sure that whatever, blah, 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 and the payment is going to, uh, to go through. So I could not answer uh, fully your question. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be awesome. I have a question. Uh, thank you again for the presentation. It's sometimes we often underestimate how much work there is something simple, uh, an application yeah. from uh, the point of the user, and it's just uh, so complex and uh, really interesting. So I'm just wondering what is the vision for CypherNode for the future? Uh, if you can just talk about it uh, a little for bit. For the future? For the future, yeah. Lightning network related or not? Everything, what's the dream? I have a huge to-do list, and I don't know if you know, well, you know Francis, he has, he is a machine of ideas. He has like a thousand ideas per day that he wants to implement right now. So <laughs> it's not a problem finding stuff to do uh, in CypherNode. But the thing, uh, the thing, the sure thing is that we are going to add several boxes on that schema. Uh, we are developing the LNURL Cypher app that is going to be added to the, the well, the, the Cypher app app store, if you, if you will. Uh, we want to, well, I have a lot of improvements to do in CypherNode on the security level, level on the performance level. Uh, we have a lot of other ideas to, we want to develop. Um, we would like to make it easier for you guys that are developing software to use it, uh, to develop software that are going to use the API. And we are all also working on uh, some admin panel for the, the CypherNode operator. Uh, and you will be able to give special authorizations to each of your Cypher apps. Um, we have Wasabi that is there. Um, what's interesting with Wasabi is instead of asking CypherNode, hey, give me a new address so I can send funds there, you can ask CypherNode, hey, give me a new Wasabi address. And the fund that you are going to send are going to go into uh, a Wasabi instance and is going to start to mix it instant, well, as, as soon as, as it's um, uh, confirmed. And when it's uh, enough private, private enough, depending on your configuration, it's going to send it to your spending wallet in your Bitcoin core. So uh, all those automations makes, make uh, 
bull, bull Bitcoin's life easier. Same thing for Liquid. We have, we support Liquid and LCAD uh, at Bull Bitcoin. It's, in, it's included in Cypher node. I don't see, well, yeah, I have to update that uh, schema. There's no Liquid, uh, there's no element, elements box there, but it's there. So, well, what's next? I, I'm not even sure. But we are going to make uh, a Lightning Network better. In, uh, in, and by the way, uh, every time we do something in Cypher node, it's because Bull Bitcoin needs it. So we do it for us first, and we, ch we use it in, with our real funds before releasing our uh, releases. So um, that's why uh, Cypher node is actually pretty much uh, it, it runs smoothly. There's not there are bugs like everywhere, but uh, not as much as you know if we were not using it. We have skin in the game related to that. Yeah, so Cypher node is open source. It's been open sourced in September 2018. Uh, we have several contributions. I have here, you just, well, uh, there's a, can I, oh yeah, I can click here. Okay, good. So uh, this is the repository on GitHub uh, for Cypher node. So uh, it's there, you can contribute, you can, uh, open issues, uh, make pull requests, please. Uh, that would be cool. And everything is there. The documentation, how to install it, how to use it. Oh, well, okay. Uh, first, Cypher node is, is um, well, at first, Cypher node was supposed to be used uh, as a personal server, not as like an open API on the internet. So I believe if you expose it on the internet and there's a DDoS on it, it's going to die, <laughs> obviously. So um, I haven't done lately uh, any metrics or any stress tests on it, uh, if you can, do something for us and uh, share the, the results, it, it would be very appreciated. And we need, also, like I said, we need to tweak some stuff to make it faster. Because there's a lot of code uh, in shell, shell code. Um, so you don't have to know a specific language to contribute because we are using shell code, uh, Golang, uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, C++. So each box can be different in, the, in different language. It doesn't matter. So you know there's, there are some languages um, slower than others. So we have components slower than others. With Lightning, you know, they say, uh, don't, uh, or that used to be the saying, uh, don't be uh, reckless. And yeah. uh, so what is the maximum amount uh, you guys feel comfortable uh, doing uh, with this uh, with LNURL feature right now, or soon, you think? Well, the, the worries are not related to LNURL here. The worries could be related to Lightning Network. Uh, we are using C Lightning with the, the backup plugin. So we have real time backups uh, on another site, you know. Uh, so if there's a crash or anything on the server, we're going to recover everything. So it's not very worrisome. Um, uh, don't be reckless. Well, the protocol is still, well, it's still early. Even if it's been like five years, it's still already, anyway. Uh, there are problems with uh, routing payments. 
And uh, well, lately uh, there was a bug. If you created an invoice with a zero amount, the last hop in the route could steal the payment. So that's why most uh, mobile wallet, wallet uh, don't uh, support having a zero invoice, a zero dollar, a zero sats invoice. Because of that bug, it just been uh, corrected, fixed, like a few weeks ago. So you see, it's still reckless. But we are, we we are not scared. Are there other instances where the last hop could potentially be a bad actor and steal funds? Uh, you said you didn't think. Or are there like similarities in other uh, parts of Lightning Network that that act the same way? For that uh, specific uh, bug? Or? problem in particular of the last stop being well, that fixed completely as far as you know? Uh, I think so. Because there was a problem with, I think, with LND, C Lightning, and Eclair, if I'm not mistaken. May maybe, maybe not the, the three most popular, but I think so. Maybe not Eclair. Anyway, I don't know if you know uh, about it, uh, uh, Matt Check, about that bug, but well, anyway. Uh, it's it's been fixed anyway lately. So upgrade your node. Yes, merci pour le, le talk. C'est super intéressant, euh, très technique. Puis euh, cool. c'est souvent des talks en surface. C'est le fun de, que ce soit des deep dives comme ça. Okay. Euh, je vais poser ma question en anglais. Puis euh, okay. c'est re, relativement à bull Bitcoin, pas nécessairement à Lightning. Okay. Um, so I was wondering if it's possible to use the batching feature in combination with like something like CoinJoin in the back end, because there's a minimum amount of, I think it's uh, 0.1 for uh, CoinJoin. And so uh, like not all transactions that people are doing are, are this big, with especially the price of Bitcoin now. Um, so yeah. Okay. So your question is about the way we at Bull Bitcoin mix the coins, or the when you buy Bitcoin and after that? Um, so, yeah. So in the back end, for example, if uh, a bunch of people are tr uh, using transactions, let's say 50, 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, if it's possible to batch them together and use Coin Join in the back end mm -hmm. to get an output that's yeah. uh, mixed, basically, or is that like is there legal implications with that or? No, there's no uh, legal implication. On the contrary, we uh, we protect our users' privacy by mixing inbound and outbound uh, coins. So you're right that right now in Wasabi you have you need to have at least 0.1 Bitcoin to be part of the mix. Uh, that's why we don't mix like every five minutes. So we are. Now our instance of Wasabi is waiting to have enough funds before taking part of the, of the mixes, right? And uh, there's that, and there's also batching. So we are going to batch uh, the Bitcoin that we are going to send uh, to our users, uh, even if the coins have been pre-mixed, mixed before that. Excellent. Thanks.